leukinemia. Risk of autoimmune diseases increases. increases. Whenever C2 and 4 are deficient, clearance of or immune complexes and antigens out of blood is impaired. So antigens remain in your body for longer time. Inappropriate overstimulation of B cells and eventually leading to SLE like problem. Am I clear? No problem. Then we can talk about another acquired problem related with complements. Sometimes there is hypocomplementemia but not due to inherited factors, let me tell you. If you have some disease in which there is some disease in which lot of immune complexes are moving in your blood. There is too much high concentration of immune complexes. They will underuse the complement system or overuse? Overuse. And eventually C3 will be consumed a lot and you will develop C3 hypocomplementemia. The classical example is again SLA. There are people who have normal level of initially C2 and C4 and everything but they develop the disease of SLA, not due to this, some other reason. If you develop any autoimmune disease in which maybe that autoimmune disease is rheumatoid arthritis or that autoimmune disease is SLA or that autoimmune disease is any autoimmune disease in which immune complexes are circulating in the blood for a long time, these immune complexes keep on stimulating the complement system so that immune complexes should be eliminated but if immune complexes are too much they overwhelm the clearance mechanism and still exist in but they inappropriately use too high amount of complement C3 levels will go down. This is one of the way to diagnose the immune complex systemic diseases. Right if you do, when, in SLA one of the part of the diagnosis is take the serum C3 level. If complement factor number 3 levels are low you can suspect that there is some disease which is consuming the complements. In many glomerulonephritis also complement C3 levels go down. Am I clear? Really? Okay. So this was acquired. Then another condition in which uh, C3 levels may be low is liver diseases. C3 are produced by the liver. If there are liver destruction like alcoholic cirrhosis or chronic hepatitis B, hepatitis and cirrhosis, so naturally hepatocyte mass becomes less and liver synthetic capability becomes less. So C3 levels in the blood will be less, right? So C3 hypocomplementemia may be due to reduced production of C3. Classic example is liver diseases. Or C3 le uh, level deficiency may be due to overutilization of C3. The classic example are immune complex diseases. Am I clear? And you know when C3 levels are very low, you are very susceptible to gram positive bacteria which may produce special infections in nasal sinuses and respiratory system. Another condition in which complements are too much used is ABO incompatibility. When mismatched blood is transfused, for example my blood group is, I have a A positive blood, so this is my circulation and my RBCs are having A antigen. My blood group is A, right? And if I need, and of course, if my blood group is A, my antibody will be anti, anti B. I should not have anti A, otherwise my antibodies will destroy my own RBCs. People who have blood group A, they have anti B. And let's suppose this is another person, and he has RBCs with the B antigen, so his blood group is B. And his antibodies are anti, his antibodies must be anti A. These are anti A antibodies and of course here there are anti B antibodies. Now if unfortunately by an accidental situation wrongly you give this blood to this person, what reaction will occur? This is the donor and that is the recipient. Listen. These anti A antibodies from the donor, when they will enter into recipient blood, they will get extremely diluted. So they will not successfully attack the recipient RBC. So when mismatched blood transfusion occur, the donor's antibodies, when they are transfused to the recipient blood, donor's antibody gets diluted in the blood of plasma of recipient and they don't build enough concentration to destroy the 
recipient RBCs. But when donors RBCs come here, can RBC dilute themselves? Can the RBCs dilute their membrane antigens? No. There are thousands of the antigens which are fixated on the RBC's membrane. So when donors RBC enter into recipient blood, and if donor RBC is incompatible, what was the donor RBC? This was B. So these antibodies will attack. So what will happen? During mismatch, AB or transfusion, these are the donors RBCs which are destroyed by recipient okay. antibodies within the recipient circulation. And when this RBC is break down here, when this RBC will break down, it will release hemoglobin. Right? Now, exactly what happened? When this, this is the suppose B antigen. And here was anti B antibody. As soon as this antibody will touch this antigen, this is IgM. It will activate the? And activate? Yes, yes. C1, 4, 2, 3, 5, B, 6, 7, 8, 9. Drill the RBC. Drrr. Membrane attack complex. So what happens? Next time you imagine, if you do a mistake, AB incompatibility, then donors RBCs and the recipient blood is attacked by the recipient antibodies and who will suffer? Donor will suffer or recipient will suffer? Recipient. Of course, the recipient will suffer because donor is free of his RBCs. These are donors RBCs which are blasting in recipient blood. So these are donors RBCs having the antigens on which recipient antibodies bind and recipient antibodies activate the recipient's complement system. A lot of complement products are produced. Membrane attack complexes are produced will lead to hemolysis of RBCs. And of course, C4A, C2A, C3A, C5A are generated. They activate all the mast cells. Mast cells produce histamine, vasodilatation. Blood pressure will fall after AB incompatibility. Mast cell will produce histamines in the lungs, bronchoconstriction. So patient develops shock. You are understanding why? That because complements are activated, C, 4A, 2A, 3A, 5A, they activate the mast cell all over the body. Remember, mast cells are present in all connective tissue, but they are specially concentrated under the skin and mucosal linings. Right? Once you know that, when all over the blood, mast cell, uh, when all over the blood, complement factors are generated due to AB incompatibility, these activate the mast cells. When mast cells around the blood vessels activate, they produce a product which dilates the blood vessel, the blood pressure falls. Is that right? Then, increased permeability will occur due to histamine, so rashes. Then, in the bronchial tree, these C, uh, the products of complement, they activate the mast cell and release histamine and bronchoconstriction. Is that right? So patient, what, the, what are the problems of the patient? As soon as mismatched blood enters, patient develop pain along the line, IV line. Of course, mast cells are being de degranulated around that. With that, patient will develop shock-like condition, bronchoconstriction, abdominal cramps, and pains in the loins. Why? Why? Because RBCs are breaking and releasing hemoglobin. Hemoglobin filters through the glomerular membrane, accumulating into his kidney, proximal convoluted tubule, damaging the proximal convoluted tubule, precipitating acute tubular necrosis. Do you really want to know how exactly it occurs? Okay, let me tell you. This is your circulation and here is your nephron, right? Normally, hemoglobin is packed within the RBC and normally RBCs don't leak in a healthy person. So hemoglobin cannot leak. But due to AB incompatibility, RBCs are ruptured. So hemoglobin is released. The molecular weight of hemoglobin is 64 kilo dalton. Hemoglobin is tetrameric protein. You know it? Yes. Right? So, as this tetrameric protein come out, it breaks down into dimers. Dimers are so small, they can filter down. Patient will develop hemoglobin yeah. urea. Plus, when lot of hemoglobin is going down here, it will clog the proximal convoluted tubule. And these very stupid proximal convoluted tubule, they think why this is blocked? They try to think this is some del delicious dish of hemoglobin coming. They start 